So oppression of women in White Sagasso Sea, uh, I will be looking at feminism and the way that women are oppressed in the novel. Firstly, I would just like to point out some things that I have noticed in the novel that stood out to me that uh, are representative of the way that women are oppressed. Um, first, firstly, the way that the narrative technique was used in the novel, we have the fact that Antoinette is the heroine of the novel and the, the, the book is actually about her. However, her husband actually does a large amount of the narration in the novel. And during this narration, he sort of evaluates Antoinette. Um, and I want to place emphasis on the word evaluating and look at value. Uh, he sort of tries to see how much value and sh she is to him. Um, which sort of shows that women are seen as like objects um, and not actual real people. Uh, also, uh, that show the the fact that he is narrating a large portion of the novel shows that uh, it shows the extent of male power in society, which is well portrayed in the novel. Uh, also, uh, there are supposed womanhood ideals that and Antoinette and other female characters in the novel must live up to which also show that women are supposed to look a certain way, act a certain way, be a certain way. Uh, in some literature that I found online uh, it states the ideals of proper feminine deportment are presented to Antoinette when she's a girl at the convent school. Uh, here we have that wo women are supposed to be poised uh, imperturbable uh, that they are supposed to be these elegant and fine cre defined creatures um, they sort of are telling women how they should be uh, ordering them around even uh, also I would like to look at women and their dependency on men in the novel uh, we have uh, the fact that they have legal and financial dependency on the men around them. Uh, it seems all, almost as though they can't function without a man or male presence in their lives, whether it be husband, father, brother, whatever. Uh, in the case of uh, Antoinette's mother, she couldn't take care of herself or her family without a male presence and uh, so she marries, re gets remarried to Mr. Mason who then takes care of the family. We have uh, also then Antoinette getting married to her husband uh, and he then takes care of her. So womanhood is therefore synonymous with a kind of childlike dependency on the nearest man. Uh, they, it seems as though women aren't able to support themselves without that male presence in their lives. Also, in the novel, uh, women are portrayed as mentally inferior to men. So we have Antoinette's uh, descent into madness. Uh, it's almost as though women are mentally weaker. So they can't even think for themselves. They are seen as these fragile, weak creatures uh, portrayed in the novel that is and uh, it is uh, for example we have uh, the letter that her aunt and her husband receives uh, from a complete stranger that he has never met uh, the saying that since both of Antoinette's parents were mentally since it, her mother was mentally ill and her father was sort of on that similar path that she would also in turn end up that way, that she had potential to be that way. And her husband immediately agrees with this complete stranger, not even giving his wife the benefit of the doubt and completely overlooking anything. He just assumes that she is going to be what the person in the letter has said mentally ill. Uh, it almost seems as though women are made mentally weaker and so more susceptible to insanity. Uh, also, in some other literature that I found, uh, women are also associated with evil. Um, 
for example, any novel where Antoinette goes to Christophine to help her find a way to get her husband to love her. Um, so we have Christophine since the, the, the novel kind of shows uh, due to her cultural, social and ethnic background she is, this black woman is associated with blasphemy and evil and magic. Um, Antoinette wants to go s as so low as to bewitch her husband. I want to put emphasis on the word bewitch. Uh, look at the fact that women, she, 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 they are seen as evil, witches. Um, Christophine is seen as having unique powers. Uh, also, I think because of her social, cultural background and ethnic background, they would see her as that because she's a black woman. Um, there's a lot of talk in the novel about her being able to do these things. And I think it's because of those factors. Uh, in some research done by Megan Miracle, we have a uh, the fact that women are trapped in an imagined world of expectations causing a descent into madness. So women are seen as weak-minded, evil things that must ha have value placed on them by men. And these are some of the things that I have noticed in the novel. Uh, women are oppressed and uh, it is very well portrayed in the novel by the, uh, by the author. Psychological oppression is a sub theme that is present throughout the novel Why It's a Gas of Sea and the cause of Antoinette's becoming the mad woman that we see at the end. As a child, Antoinette exists in a society where she was not accepted by the two major sectors in the Caribbean at that time. Those are the whites and the blacks. She was simply a tint too light and a shade too dark, leading to the psychological conflict even within herself. Her marriage to Mr. Worcester also becomes a major issue as she has now to be fully dependent on him, as all of her belongings is now legally his through their marriage. He aims to overpower her, even in mind and body, expecting her to yield to what he, he believes to be the proper behavior of a Victorian lady. He wishes to bar her mind from what she was and stifle what she has known her entire life, and that was to be a, a Caribbean girl. Mr. Worcester even becomes threatened when he becomes aware of Antoinette's use of Ovia, while he is ignorant of those costumes, because he acknowledges that this can be a means to her of rising above his desires. As a result of his oppressive ways and neglected society, Antoinette becomes the mad woman in an attempt to rebel against the colonial situation in which she is placed. In this video vlog, Susan Fisher, like it and I are going to discuss um, White Pegasusi, which is a post-colonial novel written by Dominican born author Julie. The novel in itself is very um, complex, even though on the surface level it may seem very simplistic. So, for example, the use of the title White Pegasusi. Now, the Pegasusi is not literally mentioned within the text itself, which is a very pertinent example of how the novel in itself is very symbolic of things related to geography and Jamaica at that time. Now, the white philosophy. It is used metaphorically. Some may say to suggest um, Antoinette, the main character, character and her fault situation within the novel as she is caught in between a state of powerlessness and fear of lovelessness. Similar to that, the white philosophy is um, basically seed, but it got its name from seed floating in the middle of the North Atlantic. The particular seed is called sargasm, that's where sargasm came from, and the seed is just floating in the, mid, in the um, midst of a lot of theater cards. Similar to Antoinette, also. Another symbolism held within the title in itself is the fact that the Sagasha Sea is located in the middle of, in between actually, Jamaica and England. 
which is very symbolic to the text in that it draws reference on these two settings often in the novel, whereas Antoinette is from Jamaica and her unknown husband is from um, England. England would represent colonialisers and Jamaica would represent a people who was colonialised. Right? So our thesis in analysing the novel is um, looking at the representation of the central theme of oppression within the novel and how this theme is portrayed through various theoretical perspectives, namely um, feminist perspective, psychological perspective and historical. It is also important to note that under the title of genre, the text can be seen as a historical fiction as it predominantly deals with the issue of colonialization, right? And we get through that issues related to entrapment and identity which is also discussed in the novel. On the genre, the novel can also be seen as a romance novel if we explore the relationship between Antoinette and her unnamed husband. It is also a parallel novel and a postmodern literature text. Having said this, in the video blog presentation, we are going to seek to touch on these genres and the ways in which it brings about the central theme of oppression in the novel, which was also foreshadowed even within the first few lines of the text, where, which, um, and I quote, they say, when trouble comes, close ranks, and so the white people did, but we were not of their ranks. 